All right, hey guys, uh, I'm back with another uh, prospect breakdown, rookie breakdown for the Detroit Lions 2020 NFL draft class. Um, I did Jeff Okuda the other day. If you haven't not seen that video, go check it out. Um, you know, it kind of does a very deep dive on why the Lions picked Jeff Okuda, what his role is going to be next season, uh, what to expect out of Jeffrey Okuda, uh, and just really a deep dive into everything that you need to know about the Detroit Lions first round pick um, from this past draft. Um, and now today I'm going to do DeAndre Swift, who was the second round pick of the Detroit Lions at pick 35. Um, but before we get into that, if you do enjoy my content, consider liking the video and subscribing to the YouTube channel. It means a lot to me. Uh, take those two seconds out of your day to, you know, click the red subscribe button. Um, it would make my day. You would feel better. I would feel better. Um, so just, you know, go do that. Um, but with that being said, let's get into the prospect breakdown on DeAndre Swift. With the 35th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select DeAndre Swift, running back, Georgia. So, yes, the Lions did draft DeAndre Swift at pick 35 in the NFL Draft, the third pick in the second round. Um, so DeAndre Swift is a 5'8", 212-pound running back. At the NFL Combine, he ran a 4.48 40-yard dash. He had a 35 and a half inch vertical jump and a 112 or 121 inch broad jump. Um, so he's a very athletic running back. Um, NFL scouts gave him a 6.78 grade, a uh, prospect grade, um, and that roughly equates, or at least in their, you know, their way of grading it, that equates to a quality starter year one, um, which is exactly what I think DeAndre Swift could be. Um, for the Detroit Lions, I think that he's going to be a quality starter for us. I think that he's going to have some big plays for the Lions. He's going to move the chains. He's going to, you know, keep us on the field, score us some touchdowns, win us some games. Um, so I think that's kind of the, you know, I think that's a very accurate grade. I don't know how all these turn out. I don't know the success rate of, you know, guessing the players. Um, but obviously the scouts believe that DeAndre Swift was a very good player. Um, and so do I. Um, so in college... His last year at Georgia, DeAndre Swift had 196 attempts for 1,218 yards and seven touchdowns on the ground. He also had 24 catches for 216 uh, yards and one touchdown in the air. So he's a good running back. He's a good receiving back. He can really do it all. Um, you know, he doesn't really have a, you know, weakness, something that you can point out and say he doesn't do that well. Um, he might not be elite at everything, but there's nothing that I've seen so far that you can point out in DeAndre Swift game and say, you know, he is bad at X or Y. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, he obviously, as I said just a minute ago, he's a good receiving back. The Lions, he's the best receiving back on the team right now. The Lions, you know, had Theo Riddick as a receiving back, but he wasn't really a great runner. Um, they had JD McKissick as that receiving back last year. Again, not a great runner of the football. Um, but both of those guys were serviceable. Matthew Stafford made them work um, in the offense, and he gave them the opportunity, and they put up production. Um, so if he can do that with Theo Riddick and J.D. McKissick, guys that you know aren't making big money, guys that aren't really big running back names in the NFL, um, you know what is he going to do with a DeAndre Swift, somebody that not only can run the ball but can catch the ball? Um, you know, he can do everything for this offense that we need him to do. I um, mean, we haven't really had a running back like that in a very long time. Um, obviously, Carrion can catch the ball, but he's not really a, you know, a good receiver, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't classify him as a good receiver. Bo Scarborough is, you know, obviously can catch balls, but again, not a natural receiver um, that DeAndre Swift is. So in in college, 31% of DeAndre Swift's carries were for first downs. Um, so that's very impressive. Almost a third of his carries resulted in a first down. Um, and I mean, anytime a running back in the SEC can do that, that is just amazing. I mean, you can't, you can't get much better than that. Um, he also only dropped three passes in his career out of the 90 targets that was given or that was, you know, thrown at him. So again, very natural hands, very good receiver, um, for the Detroit Lions. Um, and you know, you might look at these numbers and say, okay, they're okay, but J.K. Dobbins had 2,000 rushing yards. You know, Jonathan Taylor had 2,000 rushing yards. What, you know, why didn't we pick them? Why why did we skip over them for DeAndre Swift at, you know, 35 when maybe we could have traded back and gotten that DeAndre, or, um, the J.K. Dobbins or Taylor, uh, Jonathan Taylor? 
Um, so you have to remember the conference that all these players play in. Um, DeAndre Swift played in the SEC. The SEC is known for having good defense, good defensive line. Um, you know, it's a conference where you play LSU, Alabama, Auburn, Florida, um, you know, all these great programs that are sending, you know, two, three, four defensive linemen to the NFL draft every year. Um, and DeAndre Swift was still able to get 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns, and, you know, produce at that high of a level in arguably the toughest conference in college football. Um, there's a reason that the SEC sends, you know, two or three teams to the college football playoffs every single year. Um, it's because their defense is great. Their defense is amazing in the SEC. And um, it's obviously a challenge to really have a good offense in the SEC. And DeAndre Swift was able to have that kind of production. Um, obviously, Big Ten, not a bad conference. Power Five conference, arguably the second best conference um, out of the, all the Power Fives. Um, but they just, they don't have the defense that, you know, the SEC has. J.K. Dobbins played Penn State, who had a couple, you know, really good defensive linemen. Um, you know, J.K. Dobbins played, I don't remember exactly who, but they didn't exactly play the best defenses that college football had to offer um, until Clemson. Uh, and Clemson obviously had a very good defense. And J.K. Dobbins, you know, you could say was the best player in that game. If he doesn't get injured, the Buckeyes probably win that game against Clemson and go on to play LSU. And then who knows how the college football year turns out. But um, so he's a very good running back. But again, he didn't play in the SEC. And he, as I'll get into in a minute, he had so many more attempts at getting those yards than DeAndre Swift did. Um, again, same thing with Jonathan Taylor. He played in the Big Ten also. Um, he played Ohio State, who had a very good defense and struggled, uh, at least in the first game. He had a pretty good second game. Um, but he, again, he had the most carries out of the big three running backs in this draft. Um, so DeAndre Swift only had 440 carries in his college career, um, which is, you know, not a lot considering he was the best running back on a great program. The Georgia Bulldogs are contenders for the national championship every year, and he was the star of that offense. Um, and he only had 440 carries in the three years combined. Um, to kind of put that in perspective with the other big three, Jonathan Taylor had 926 carries um, in his three years, and J.K. Dobbins had 725. So they each had almost, you know, what, 300 more carries than DeAndre Swift, and DeAndre Swift was, you know, still able to put up very good numbers, very respectable numbers in the SEC. Um, and uh, Jonathan Taylor and J.K. Dobbins are not the natural receiver that DeAndre Swift is. Um, neither of them are horrible at it, but, you know, do you want somebody that can catch the ball or somebody that's great at catching the ball? I mean, it's just a question of what you want in your offense. Um, and obviously, the Lions wanted a guy that is great at catching the ball um, out of the backfield and can make people miss and do pretty much everything at a high level. Um, so he wasn't a bell cow at Georgia, obviously, with only 440 carries. Um, but he's not going to have to be that in the NFL. He's not going to have to be that in Detroit because we're going to have that constant rotation of him and carry on and Bo Scarborough and Ty Johnson and Jason Hundley even a little bit probably. Um, you know, they're going to have that constant rotation of running backs that's going to keep all their running backs fresh um, while wearing down a defense that's going to, you know, have to probably deal with Detroit running the ball 40 times a game, you know, 30, 40, somewhere in there, I would assume times a game um, if not more and each of those running backs is going to give it their all on every play because even if you know they get tired um, you know they're going to give their all because when they're tired they know that they have a backup behind them that can run the ball just as effectively and um, you know they're going to have that rotation that wears out defenses uh, before they get worn out um, that's going to help them stay healthy it's going to help them you know keep up that production and have let all of them have a very good season for the Lions. And I would not be surprised next year if the Lions had a top running offense, um, which is something that Stafford has never had, um, you know, as a Detroit Lion. And, you know, when he does have a good running game, he has, you know, just been very good in games. I think he's like 9-1 or 10-1 or something like that. He's a very good record when his running backs get to 100 rushing yards. 
and you know but it hasn't happened a lot for Stafford so if we have a top running game in the NFL with Matthew Stafford and all those wide receiving weapons um, this is going to be a really tough team to beat next season even if our defense is giving up you know points um, I'm not saying they will uh, hopefully that the defense is a little better hopefully they figure some stuff out this year to you know get off the field but even if they don't I think that this Detroit Lions team is going to you know drain the clock with running backs I think they're going to run out the clock which is you know another good reason to draft a running back is if your defense isn't good you know draft running back so you can stay on the field and move the chains and sustain the long healthy drives like the Raiders did last season the Raiders didn't have a good uh, defense last year so they lent, they lent on Josh Jacobs for a lot of the season and he gave them you know eight nine ten minute drives that just drained the clock and kept the other offense off the field um, and that's something I think the Lions are looking to do this season. Um, and then, you know, by the end of the drive, when you've taken off eight minutes of the clock, then you score a touchdown, go up by seven. And, you know, the offense, the opponent's offense obviously has less time to work with. And then, you know, your defense is off the field more, gets more rest, um, and obviously can't give up points if they're not on the field. Um, so uh, I gave this pick in my first, you know, in my quick overview um, grades of the draft I gave this pick a B plus and I'm gonna stick with that um, the more I look at him the more I kind of see what early is gonna carve out he's not gonna be the bell cow for this Detroit Lions team he's probably not gonna get 40 50 well not 50 he's probably not gonna get you know 30 carries a game um, for the Lions but he is gonna be a healthy rotational um, you know receiving and running back for the Detroit Lions somebody that can do it all um, if DeAndre Swift is in and your gap integrity is not good on the defense DeAndre Swift is gone um, he you will not catch him uh, he's going in for seven yard or seven uh, points he's going in for the touchdown um, and that's something the Lions haven't really had um, you know hasn't really had that sustainability that they're gonna have this year um, DeAndre Swift brings a ton to the Lions and I I'm not mad that they drafted him. Uh, was there better defensive talent on the board? Was there very good defensive talent on the board? Yeah. Was there, you know, you know, very good running backs that we could have traded down and got? Probably. Um, but, you know, you do you want a good running back or do you want the best running back in the draft? If you're going to pick a running back, do you want, you know, the best or do you want the second best, uh, right? I mean, you just don't know where DeAndre Swift is going to go. And if the Lions think that he is their guy, then you got to take him. Um, so I think a B plus is a good thing for this. Um, maybe it wasn't the biggest position of need, but best player on the board, um, at that time, plus a position of need, even if it's not the biggest, um, you know, you can't go wrong. Can't fault the lines too much for that. So that is the breakdown of Deandre Swift. Um, those are my thoughts, though, my opinions, um, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below of this pick. Let me know if you thought it was a good one, a bad one. Let me know why. Um, and with that being said, I will see you guys next time there is Lions news. Um, the schedule comes out tomorrow, so I'll probably do a quick update on that video or, um, you know, a quick update for that. Uh, and then I'll get into the cornerback room tomorrow also. Um, so unless there's a signing or something before there are some rumors that, you know, we might be looking at Marcus Golden or Everson Griffin. So if anything does materialize, I will let you guys know. If not, I will see you tomorrow for, uh, whatever video I plan on doing and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.